بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله السلام عليكم رحمة الله وبركاته we ask that Allah subhanahu wa taala the Almighty accepts our good and forgives our evil protects us from kulisu wa makru may Allah azza wa jal bless us with the class with the bat أحبت في الله الله عز وجل says في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون. الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتابه المبين. After بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful. قد أفلح المؤمنون. Indeed the the mu'minun the believers are successful. Uh, this uh, ayah al karima First, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with the basmala, which is a way of us, the reciter, uh, seeking barakah and blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we are saying, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. And then you're reading, you're reciting. So you are seeking the barakah of Allah azza wa jal. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim those are from some of the divine names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we say Allah, we say Ar-Rahman, we say Ar-Rahim, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Allah, He is the only one uh, worthy of worship and that is one of His divine names and the most supreme name is Allah because you can't, uh, there is no way except for some of the mulhideen and some of the disbelievers who try to co-opt the meaning of Allah, but you can't. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship, and this is one of his supreme names, which all of his other names and sifat, uh, his, his divine traits and attributes, return to. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, qad aflaha al-mu'minun. Indeed, the believers are successful. Imam Sa'di, Rahmatullah uh, Ali, he points out that here that this ayah and the ayats that are mentioning, they are praising the believers and they are encouraging us to try to have those traits so that we can be successful. That our success and our joy and happiness in both lives, it comes from having these traits. And that's why the mu'minun are successful. Qad aflaha al-mu'minun. They are successful because they possess the traits that will follow in the ayat. In the ayat. And this is also an encouragement for us to try to uh, imitate and emulate uh, these traits and this only comes about through Iman, through faith through Iman, meaning you enter the fold of Islam and you are a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being a believer in Allah azza wa jal we also have to understand that Iman it fluctuates, Iman has different levels to people to follow it, they have different levels and your Iman it has different levels, meaning sometimes your your iman is high and strong. Sometimes your iman is less. And Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah, they believe that iman, yazid bi ta'a wa yanqus bil ma'asiyah, that our iman, our faith, it increases with obedience to Allah and it decreases with disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is an encouragement for us to... Uh, be of the Mu'minun. Imam Tabari, Rahmatullah Alay, Rahmatin Wasiya, Ibn Jarir, he mentions about this ayah, Qadaflaha al Mu'minun. He says in his tafsir that those people who believe in Allah and His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they agree what uh, came to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning revelation. And they practice it. And they call to it. 
then these are the ones who will enter paradise and reside there forever. And this is their success, their faza, faza fil akhirah. This is the the success in the hereafter. Imam Ashanqiti, rahmatullah, he, he mentions about this ayat. He says, وَفَلَالْ مُؤْمِنُونَ مَذْكُورَ ذِكْرًا ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا فِي الْقُرْآنِ كَقَوْلُهُ وَبَشِرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ بِأَنَّ لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَضْلًا كَبِيرًا So he says that the success of the believers is mentioned, that's mentioned in this ayah, is mentioned throughout the Qur'an in many places. So, uh, like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبَشِرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ and give glad tidings to the mu'mineen, the, the believers, بِأَنَّ لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَضْلًا كَبِيرًا that they will receive this uh, excellence, this reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is azim. It's great. It's kabir. It's huge. A huge reward. Those are just some of the... Uh, important things that we have to reflect on when reading just this ayah, the importance that this ayah, it begins with describing the success of the mu'mineen and that we should strive our best to attain those traits and have and possess those traits and be a part of calling to those traits, meaning in da'wah, ilallah, azawajal. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions fi kitabi al-kareem, وَفْعَلُ الْخَيْرَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and, and this is in the imperative form, this is Allah commanding us, وَفْعَلُ وَفْعَلُ خير. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to do good, to do good deeds in every kind of good that we can do. And then he says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ this is in order that you gain success. If you want success in this life as well as the next, it's by doing good deeds, not by doing evil deeds. It's by kathrata a'mala salih. It's, it's, it's doing lots and lots and lots of righteous deeds. Everything from smiling to greeting to serving people to giving in charity to saying just a kind word for doing your duties to a law in his creation, giving people their rights. All of this is a part of doing good deeds. All of this is pleasing to a law, and we need to be vigilant in doing so. Then in the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, Those who in their prayer, they are the khashi'un, that they have this type of humility. So this is the first trait that's mentioned in this surah from the traits of the mu'minun in order for them to gain that success. Qad aflaha al-mu'minun. Indeed, the, the believers are successful. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know who those mu'minun are. Mu'minun are what traits do they possess? Alladina hum fi salatihim khashi'un, meaning those who are humble in their prayer. Uh, Imam Ibn Jarir al Tabari, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Yukul ta'ala, Alladina hum fi salatihim, ida qamu fiha khashi'un, wa khushu'ihim. Fiha tadhallalahum lillah fiha bita'atihi. Wa qiyamihim fiha bima amaruhum bil qiyam bihi fiha. So uh, Imam Ibn Jarir al-Tabari, he mentions <coughs> that Allah the Almighty states, Alladhinuhum fi salatihim idha qamu fiha. Those who who stand for the prayer, you know, if they uh, stand and they give it, it's right. And how do they do it? Khashi'un. They do it with humility. 
and their humility, it is that com complete humbling themselves, submitting themselves to Allah in obedience to Him, and establishing it, meaning establishing this prayer in this khushur, during the prayer, and establishing their fulfillment of the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the prayer. Some of the Mufassirin, uh, Ibn Jarir, he goes on to state that some of the Mufassirin, some of the scholars of Tafsir, they differed over this ayat. They said that this ayat was revealed because some of the people used to look up when they were praying. They used to look up in the air while they're praying. And then this ayat was revealed and that practice was changed. So uh, those are just some of the aqwal, some of the statements regarding this ayat. But what is imperative is that we strive to have this khushur, this humility. And this humility is done by, is practiced by uh, humbling ourselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means we're conscious of Allah when we're praying. It also means that we are uh, we are not doing excessive movements, harakat. Instead, we are silent, except for that which is, you know, the prayer that's allowed and so forth. And we're not doing ex uh, excessive movements, but rather we are humbling our whole being before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the prayer. And this is the full acceptance of Allah and the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we are practicing the prayer properly and we're given it its right and we're having this khushur. Because then we are fully concentrating. We're fully directing our attention to our Lord. We are abandoning the outside world and we're removing any confusion and anxiety and things that consume our heart to distract us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why you see this is a sifa min sifat al-mu'minin. So this is a trait from amongst the various traits of the believers. And it's the first trait mentioned in this surah that the believers, they possess, they, they possess this trait and this is what gains them that foes, that success. قَدْ أَفْلَهَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ So, those believers, the ones who gain the success, one of the traits they possess, and one of the reasons they gain the success, is this humility in the prayer. And that's why it's an admonishment, and it's a reminder for us, to strive our best to perfect our prayer, to not uh, stand for our prayer with laziness, not delaying our prayers, and not being busy with everything else. Devote this simple amount of time to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to your communication with Allah azza wa jal. And that's why you see that this is an issue of iman. And the mu'mineen possess this, the believers possess this. Why? Because if you're lazy and you're weak in your iman, <clears throat> you're not think you are consumed by the worldly things. You are consumed by the outside world of your prayer. But when you have this khushur, this humility, you realize that whatever's going out in the world, this is the time to shut it down for a minute. Just during the prayer at least. Have this communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can relieve you of your stress and all the distress and all the difficulties you find in life. So this is very powerful when we reflect upon this. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil, protect us from kulisu wa makru, bless us to be of the khashi'in, and help us to uh, gain those uh, traits and be of those who are comforted in the salat and by the Salat, as the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam was, was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Muhammad.